Capstone 3. In Milestone 3, you are creating three classes. Milestone 3 that you can start right now if you want to. Well, there it is. So you can, you're writing three different classes. You are creating one abstract-based class. Okay, it's not an interface. It's an abstract-based class called billable. So anything that can go on the bill, anything that can go on the bill is a billable class. Okay? It's a descendant of a billable. What billable has, it has a name, okay? Name of something that is getting billed. It has a price. It has a protected method that <clears throat> sets the price. It has a protected method that sets the name if needed. It has a default constructor that initializes a bill item to an empty state. It has a copy constructor an assignment operator and destructor for rule of three because the name the the name is dynamic it has four pure virtual methods one is a print that displays information in a formatted way it has bool order which essentially runs the order for this billable item because this billable item essentially eventually is going to be either a drink or a food that you order in a restaurant. So you should be able to order your billable item. You should be a, you order your cheeseburger to order your whatever. Okay. <clears throat> then you have an ordered pure virtual method. Ordered pure virtual method. It returns true if the object is an item that is ordered by a customer, okay? It returns false it's if it is just an item that can be shown for customer to be bought, okay? So if ordered is false, it means this is just an item. If ordered is true, it means a customer ordered this. It has a read that reads the details of the billable item from a file, okay? So it reads one billable item from a file. These are all pure virtual methods that are going to be implemented in drink and food. You have two overloads over here that you should implement, plus operator and plus equal operator. So the price of a billable item can easily be added to a double, okay? Two helper functions. These two helper functions both receive a double at left and have a billable at right. The top one adds the price of the billable to money and returns it. The second one, uh, sorry, finds the sum of the billable price and money and returns it. The second one adds the price of the billable money to the reference of the uh, double that it's receiving. Sorry, billable uh, price to the money that it's receiving and returns it. It literally does plus and plus equal for a double when double stands at left. So the, the, the complete price of a bill can easily be calculated. That's billable. Any questions about billable? Questions about billable? Suggestions? Objections? All right, next one. A drink class. A drink class is a billable class that represents a drink. Okay? So it has one additional attribute to billable. That is size. The size in billable, it can be either set to S for small, M for medium, L for large, and X for extra large. If the size is unset, unset, it means anything other than those four. You can choose whatever you want to put in it for an unset character. It's your choice. That's your empty state. Okay? So, yeah, so it, uh, if it's unset, it defaults to a safe empty state. And later when you print, the outcome instead of small yada yada is just few dots. It's going to be explained later on. Public methods, print, 
overwrites the billable print. That's why I'm not telling you what the signature is. It overwrites the billable's print to display or save the drink's name. When I say display or save, display means on screen, save means in the file. Okay? So, print method outputs the drink in the following format. Name up to 25 characters in 28 spaces. So if the name in the dynamic name that we have is 50, only the 25 first characters are printed. In 28 spaces, left justified padded with dots. Size, displayed small, medium, large, or extra large, exactly as you see, depending on what's inside. It is displayed as series of dots, as you see, if it is not set to anything. Okay? <clears throat> Price, write justified, seven spaces, padded with spaces and displayed with two decimal places. That's how it's printed. Done. You don't print any new line, anything after. That's what it's, that's how it's printed. Questions about print? If you put a day on this, it's done. It's a very easy thing to implement. And I'm going to mention later on the utils file. I add a couple of more, I think one or two more uh, methods to it. Use the utils for your uh, low-level memory, I don't know, string stuff. Or if you do something, if you have done something in previous one that you can use now, use it. And I hope that you created your foolproof uh, data entry in it because you're going to need it, need it in milestone five. Okay? <clears throat> None of the tests that we are doing is, is testing for foolproofing. You know that. That's going to hit at the end of the semester. So if you don't do it now, you're going to be busy at the end. So it's better to do it now. Order. What order does, it builds a menu. So in order, you're going to have an instance of menu with three indentation. So your menu will be indented three times, and it's got to be displayed like this. So you know what is the title, you know what is the prompt, you know what is the back, everything. So you should build this menu. And you know how the menu works. It returns the value that it And runs it. Depending on what the order, me order menu executes, receives the answer, and sets the size to whatever it is. If back is selected, if size is something, it should be set back to, un to un undecided. So remember, if it's 1, 2, 3, 4, you set it to corresponding value. If it's 0, you wipe it out. To put, you put it back in a safe, empty state. It returns true if size was selected, or false if back was selected. Are we okay with order? Are we okay with order? Ordered overrides billable order. What it does, it returns true or false, right? It returns true if size is selected. If size in onset, it returns false. It just, you can just test and see if this object is an ordered object or not. Okay, because a drink is essentially ordered if the size is decided. If it's not, it means it's not ordered. That's why we don't have any specific flag for it. Any question down to this point? Read, overrides billables read returns drinks detail from, uh, from a comma separated input file in following format. So first is the name of the drink. We don't know what's its size. You read it dynamically, comma, and the price. So it could be orange juice, 3.5, new line. That's what the format is. As you see, the other stuff are not here. It doesn't have the size in there. So when you are reading stuff from the file, the while you are piling up in your memory, they are all unordered items. Therefore, you have to make sure that the size when you are reading is set to un, uh, undecided, set to the, its default value. 
Are we okay? Again, this is read dynamically. <clears throat> price, adjust the base price based on M size as follows. So price does not just return the price. It looks at the size. Okay? So <clears throat> if the size is large or item is not ordered, that's the price. So a large size is the price of the thing, uh, of, the, of the, the original price of the item, or if it's not ordered. Anything else, if it's small, you return half a price. If it's medium, you return three quarter of the price. If it's extra large, you return one and a half time of the price. Large is the same price. Nothing's modified. Do we understand what price is? Questions? <clears throat> this three is very important. Since this class, since this class does not manage resources outside of its scope, it does not require implementing rule of three. Remember what we said in class? When you have a derived class that does not have any resources outside of its scope, you don't need to care about rule of three. If it's inherited from something that implies rule of three, they're going to be called automatically and everything's going to be set properly. Are we cool with this? Food class. Food is a, is a billable, food is a billable uh, object and it represents food item that includes functionality for customization and portion type, which means you can customize the food. You can say no tomatoes. You can say well done for your steak. You can whatever. You can say I want it to be veggie or something. Whatever that you want to have add to your order, it can be customizable to that. And it has two portions, adult size and child size. So these are the stuff that's going to be added. And because child is a Boolean, it's not trinary or uh, many different things like size, I cannot find out if it's order or not from the child. That's why an additional flag for ordered is added to it. We have a Boolean flag over here for ordered to see if it's order or not. And that should be kept updated based on the object being ordered or not. I can't, because Boolean is either true or false, and it's child, so I don't know. I cannot say if it's ordered or not. So that's why we have an additional one. Customize is a dynamically allocated C string for storing customizations, which means no onions, for example. Okay, for example. Okay. Public methods. Constructor and destructor. So you should do rule of three for this. Because this one has customized, you have to apply rule of three to make sure everything is done. You have done it in class, you know exactly how it is, you do it that way, okay? So you do rule of three. <clears throat> print, overlight billables print to display or save the foods, items, details, including portion type. Customizations are printed only if O stream, okay, customizations. So the customization thingy that you have in the property, it is only printed if the O stream you are printing on is C out. If the O stream you are printing out is not C out, you don't print it. How can you find that out? Anyone? <clears throat> huh? No, when you're calling the function, you are not overriding anything because it's O stream. You can pass an F stream to an O stream. Nothing's wrong with that. How can you find out? I'll give you a hint. When you are doing assignment operator overload, what do you do in it? What you have to do in it? You have to do a test in it. What is that? Self-testing, right? How do you find out if the current object is not the other object? You check the addresses, right? That's all. Whatever is coming O stream is coming OSTR. Check the address of that and compare it with the address of C out. If the addresses are the same, the object you are dealing with is C out. If the addresses are not the same, the object is not C out. Okay? So why? Because customizations are not supposed to be saved in a file. In a file, you only have the, the food items and their price. Customizations are done when 
ordering is happening. So actually, we need it. So the ordered Boolean thingy, you can actually, oh no, maybe somebody doesn't have customization. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I wanted to, suddenly I thought of something and I said, and forget about it, never mind. OK, so that's that. So a food may be ordered, but not customized. I just want the cheeseburger the way they are giving it to me. I don't want to do any changes. That's why we have the order. I remember. <laughs> OK? Order overrides billable. The only thing that it, a menu, it shows only a menu for adult, child, and back like that, so you know how to build the menu. The menu is built with three indentations, as I mentioned. So it sets the order portion for adult or child or whatever, OK? And if either adult or child is selected, then you ask for customizations. If they say back, you don't ask for customizations. It means they change their mind. They don't want to do anything, OK? So if either adult or child is selected, then you're going to display special instructions, and you receive, receive something dynamically over there. I have added a function that receives code from, I, from OStream dynamically in utils. And I have done everything from scratch, so it doesn't use any libraries. So it's a good idea to take a look at it and see how it works and walk through it and learn. OK, so it's a learning opportunity. All the stuff you see in utils is not just to make your life easy. I could just include IO uh, string header file and do it over there or use the string object and do it. I didn't want to. I want to actually hard code it so you see and walk through and learn from it. OK? Now, this is a tricky part. For customization, if user only enters, hits enter, you should detect that. It means no customization. OK? But if actually enters something and hits enter, then there is customization. So if user just presses enter, no customizations added. It is and M customizes the allocated. You have to follow all the rules of dynamic memory allocation. Whenever that you are trying to set the customization, if you change your mount and you're not, remember you have to make sure it's deleted. You have to make sure it's empty. You have to make sure there is nothing in it, and it's not when you're going out. Order overrides billable and returns the unordered flag. So of course, when, when all these things happen, when adult or child is selected, you must set the ordered flag to true. It means this thing is ordered. You have to keep track of that. That's why ordered only returns, returns the, it's a, it's a query for the ordered flag. That's it. Now, read. Overrides billables read, reads the food details from comma separated file. It's exactly like the, the food. So it has the name and it has the price, as you see. Right? It's exactly like drink. It has the name and the price, pasta with tomato sauce, comma, 3.5, and new line. Wow, pasta with tomato sauce, $3.50. It's, it's probably from 60s. <laughs> I, should have made it, I should have made it 13. Anyways, anyways. So, OK, so if read is successful, OK, the details are set to corresponding values. So you set the name prop to whatever it's supposed to be. And you set the price to whatever it's supposed to be. <clears throat> M child and M order are set to their default values. You have to make sure that, that uh, when you are reading them from the file, no ordering is done, so they should be set to their default values. And M customized should be deleted and set to null. Because you may, you, maybe the object you are reading already has something in it. So at any time that you are reading, because customizations are not read from the file, you have to make sure they are deallocated and set to null. Price overwrite uh, billable's price returns half the price if it's child and the regular price if it's not. OK? So children pay half price. $1.75 for pasta sauce. That's good. Anyway, so are we good? OK? 
and then you, and and for data entry you don't uh, I didn't I didn't uh, do anything uh, so the data entry is like this as you see so you are you it says enter one two three four and zero so that's what you do you enter one two three four and zero then enter two so two and enter two and enter then it says two and it says enter only for food so the drink you put two it's gone it's not for for this one because it's it's a virtual being called that's why I, I have to print the message for both so now in here I'm gonna say two and hit enter now one as you see a special instructions I'm gonna say well done then two then only enter to pass then zero to get up okay now two and enter now two and enter again this is the virtual test and it's done finished that's your test for milestone three you do this it means you have designed your classes properly and you're ready for milestone four in milestone four you're going to create the main engine so for milestone five the only thing that you need to worry about is your uh, foolproofing because uh, for milestone uh, five milestone four you are doing all the engine and everything so essentially milestone five is calling your methods of milestone four so this project is better to say is four and a half milestones not five milestones because milestone five I've already done it in your menu you can see it actually what the code is so it's that's essentially what it is uh, you have few things to do in there like opening a file reading a file and things like that but there are no biggies because everything is designed properly in your items to read from the file you simply open the file and keep reading your item and automatically it reads it so everything is done if you do your stuff properly you're going to be fine down down the down the line any questions about milestone three suggestions do the dash two I don't know do a dash two it tells you uh, uh, I'm not on I'm, I'm on Windows otherwise I would have done dash two okay uh, it's eight days I think Huh? From no, from the due date of the other one. The other one is due yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow, so eight days from tomorrow, I think. I'm again. I think. Don't comment me. You told me it was eight. I don't know. Go do dash two. See what it is. Whatever it's in there, that's what it is. Okay. So that's that. Anything else? Oh yeah, milestone three is flexible too. So when it's due, you can still give it one week later. But don't forget, it's end of the semester. I mean, like one week later than you have time. So if it's one day back and forth, it doesn't matter. But do it now. You aim for it to be finished in four days. And believe me, follow the instructions. Look at the notes we have done in class, and you can finish it in four days easy. Okay? These are very well guided, and it's not very difficult. Just follow the instructions all right so if there is no question I'll stop the recording and post it for everyone any question one any question two suggestions objections all right